Hello and welcome to this video on powering AC circuits. This is typically one of the most difficult subjects in circuit theory, so we're going to devote several videos to the subject. And in today's video, we're really just going to do an introduction to the topic and cover some of the basic concepts. So make sure you keep watching to the end to learn how we can calculate the instantaneous power and average power in an AC circuit. It's a vital skill. So with that, let's make a start. So, as you might expect, power in AC circuits is not exactly the same as power in a DC circuit. It's not just going to be a constant value, it's going to be a time-varying value. Before we begin discussing this, there's some key questions I'd like you to think about. So, basically, what are the units of power? But what are the units you'd see on your electricity bill? Are they the same? Are they different? If they're different, think about why they're different. Do a Google, see what an electricity bill looks like, and see if it's the same as what you think the units of power are. So I hope you've had time to look at that and think about it. Let's have a look in more detail on the next slide. So really, the units of power are in watts. We know that from DC circuits, of course, a watt is actually a joule per second. Electricity bills tend to tell you your consumption in kilowatt hours or how many kilowatts you're using in an hour. So if you have an electrical device that uses a kilowatt, in other words, on the label of that device, it says it uses one kilowatt. If you run it from, for one hour, you would use one kilowatt hour. So the way you get charged for electricity is per kilowatt hour. So the electricity company will have a price per kilowatt hour. Let's just guess. I don't know what it is. I should probably know since I do pay my own electricity bills, but there you go. Let's say it's 15p per kilowatt hour. And what will happen is you'll have some inspector come to your house and look at your electricity meter and it'll have a really big number on it. So let's just make a number up. 312667 and this will be your January number and then they'll come again you know three four months later and you'll have something like I don't know let's say that's in April and basically they'll do a subtraction find the difference and then times that difference by 15 pence and that's how much you'll get charged on your bill plus a load of other sneaky charges that they put on but anyway there you go you're essentially paying for the kilowatt hours used. In this module, we're mainly concerned with power in watts rather than kilowatt hours because we're more interested in individual components in a circuit and how much they dissipate or absorb. And you'll be pleased to know that actually the equations you learnt at DC, so essentially P equals IV, still holds true. It's exactly the same thing. However, I and V are no longer constants, one amp, one volt. They're now cosines, so with an amplitude and a frequency. So again, the process is the same. The mass is going to be a little bit different. So if we think about a component here, we don't know what it is. It's drawn as a resistor symbol, but that could be any impedance. Normally just use a square box to denote an impedance. And the product VT times IT equals the power at any given time. So this is called instantaneous power. So if I gave you two waveforms, let's just draw some waveforms. I'm picking these completely at random. We've got two waveforms there. Of course, of course, this would actually be a resistor now because we can see there's no phase shift between current and voltage. So you, you could tell that. You know, if it was plus 90 or minus 90, it would be either a capacitor or an inductor. So we've got a resistor essentially, but let's not worry about what it is. And at any given time, so if I said, what's the voltage at one second? Essentially, you put one second here and you could tell me what the voltage would be at one second. And you could do exactly the same thing for the current at one second. You could times those two values together and you would get the power at one second. So it's called the instantaneous power, the power at the instant you're interested in. Unfortunately, that's not such a useful value for us because it's always changing. What we'd like to know is something like the average power dissipated by the components or something like that. So here on this slide, what I've got is the average power. We know it's average, 
because it has these triangular shaped brackets. This tells us we're talking about the average of the power. We have to be a little bit careful here because let's just imagine, and we'll, we'll do a lot of this on the next few slides, so you don't really need to add it to your notes if you're making them. If you have a sine wave or a cosine, what's the average of it? Well, the average is zero, right? The average of that, if you put it into Excel and calculated the average, you'd find the average is equal to zero because it's as much positive as it is negative. So we have to be a little bit careful in power in AC circuits because sometimes we put power in, but on the other half cycle, we get that power back. It doesn't mean we can use the power, but it comes back. So the net power over a given time can be zero. But anyway, let's look a little bit more into that in later slides. It's useful to use average power because it avoids us having to do integrals since total energy dissipated over time is given by E equals the integral of power with respect to time. And that gives us the average times time. And this is much easier to calculate. Let's look at an example now. Here we have a really simple electronic device. We've already discussed this right in lecture one. It's a kettle. In other words, it's a big resistor that's water cooled. Because it's a resistor and it's powered by AC, you know, you plug it into the wall, which is an AC supply, then the current and voltage are going to be in phase. So I've made these little graphs in MATLAB and we can see here, this is typically what the voltage out of the main socket in the UK looks like. You know, it's going up to around 320 volts. So when you see on the socket that it says it's 230 volts, what it's actually telling you is the RMS value. So we'll come on to the meaning of RMS in a few lectures time. But basically, if we times that RMS value by root two, we get the actual amplitude and we can see it's 325 volts. So here our sine wave goes up to 325 peak and its frequency is 50 Hertz. So you could calculate that from this graph. And the resistance of this heating element in here is around 25 ohms. So from that, we can calculate what the current waveform would look like. And because it's a resistor, there's no phase shift. So the frequency stays the same. There's no phase shift. These are both sines. It doesn't matter whether they're sines or cosines. And the amplitude of that current is around 13 amps. However, to calculate the instantaneous power, we need to times these two sine waves together. And when we do that, what we see is we actually get a sine squared function. So you can see it still looks like a sine wave, but the frequency is doubled compared to this one. This was at 50 Hertz. And in the same time window, you've got double the number of periods. So there's twice as many peaks as there are on this one. So this is sine squared. And you can see now, if you look at the axes, it's going between zero and four and a bit. So this does have an average value. You know, the average is going to be somewhere here. Whereas if you took the average of the current or voltage on these two waveforms and times them together, you'd get a zero. So the mean power or average power in this kettle is two kilowatts, whereas the peak power, so right at the top here, it's around four kilowatts. So just to summarize this video, we explored how we pay for electricity at home. And in later videos, we'll see how that's actually not the same as industrial users pay for electricity. We also learn how to calculate the instantaneous and average power in a simple AC circuit. In the next video, we're going to take a look at power in AC circuits in more details and consider specific components like resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you have any questions, of course, put them in the chat and please like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. See you in the next video and thanks for watching.